And the next question is, I'm currently doing my GCSEs and I'm wondering how many A stars I'm going to need to be get going to need to get to be fairly competitive for a shot at getting a medicine offer. So yeah, we kind of answered this one before. Um, with GCSEs, just do your best. Like try and get as many A stars as you can, but don't obsess over the number that you need. Um, like Simon said, the average number is seven A stars for a medicine applicant, but that varies a lot. You may get rubbish GCSEs and then go on to do really good A levels. Um, you may get amazing GCSEs and then you're fine, but it's just another part of the admissions process. You know, unless you absolutely bomb and you just you don't get any A stars or A's at all, um, don't worry about it. Just do your best. I mean, a lot of medicine is, comes down to work experience as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting experience in variety of medical environments because I, I, what I've realised after doing my interview is that a lot of the interviews to do with can you cope with the course? Yeah. Like, will you stay the course literally? Yeah. So yeah, like whilst you're doing your GCSEs, just try your best, um, and then after that, start to focus on getting the work experience and preparing for the interview because, say, well, especially for medicine, yeah, interview and the work experience, those are the two really, really important parts, and then the GCSEs will just build on top of everything else as like another piece of information. Next question: Will taking IB instead of A levels reduce my chance of getting in? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. Why would I don't know why people would think that? Just because. Why would people think that? Um, I guess it's because in a lot of the admissions media, a lot of people, they talk about offers in terms of A-levels. Yeah. should point out that on the Oxford website, um, the requirements are listed in terms of A-levels per subject, but also in terms of IB. Mm. Um, so there's no discrimination against it at all. I think, if anything, IB might prepare you better. Well, yeah. But I mean, if you do A-levels, if you do IB, if you do Scottish Hive, like whatever the equivalent is in your country or wherever you are, whatever your school's offering, um, you know, Oxford has to accept it. I think, you know, they can't discriminate against what course you've taken. Um, yeah. The only thing that Oxford isn't very keen on, and I think this goes for a lot of other um, kind of red brick unis, is uh, like stuff like BTECs um, and MBQs. Like they, yeah. if, you, if you do maybe two, two A-levels and a BTEC, that won't be as strong as a candidate who has three A-levels. Um, but, you know, IB won't hinder your chances at all. Um, next question. I heard that somebody got invited back for six interviews but didn't get in. The number of interviews you have here cannot tell you anything about your chances of whether you're going to get in or not. So some people come and have one interview. Most people will have at least two. Some people end up having six or seven. Um, and there really isn't any logic to that method. Um, so I don't, if you have an interview with one... I don't know how... Well, it varies from subject to subject. Like, I know philosophy and theology have six, in uh, six interviews. Yeah. Um, like you say, you shouldn't read anything into it at no. all. Um, and, like, if you're doing joint subjects, you might have interviews on different aspects of the subject. So, like you said, for philosophy and theology, you might have one purely for philosophy, one purely for theology, one for both of them together, one or something totally, like, I don't know, something related to the subject but a bit more abstract. Um, it's just, it depends on the course and it depends on the colleges you're at. Some colleges may be like heavily oversubscribed, so they need to kind of dish out the interviews evenly around the colleges and you may end up getting more. Um, but yeah, like you said, there's, it's, it's unfortunate, I suppose, if you end up having six or seven interviews and you don't get a place, but that's just the way it works. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, the next question says, what do Oxford think of non-course subjects such as A-level, so, no, Non-core subjects at A-level, e.g. philosophy of religion and ethics. I don't really know what you mean by non-core subjects. Um, because, well, I don't know, how do you classify a core subject? Like, maths, English, science. It's the stereotypical Yeah. Um, well, obviously, that's the point of A-level, is that you do subjects beyond beyond the core. Um, you do subjects so, you find interesting. Yeah, you do this. Yeah, exactly. You do subjects you find interesting. Um, A-levels all have... Think they all roughly have the same merit. The only ones that might not, I think, is general studies. General, yeah, general studies have, doesn't, <laughs> um, and it, I don't think it has any merit anywhere. Um, critical thinking. Critical thinking, I think, is it, do, it doesn't really have any merit in itself as an A level, but it is a really useful A level it study helps for coming into yeah. Oxford. Um, but yeah, no, I think PE. 
I'm not How many sure. people here have done PE? Really? Yeah, like, okay. um, I was going to name somebody, but I'm not going to do okay. that. Um, but yeah, no, people here do PE, definitely. Yeah, I mean, again, it depends on what you're applying for. So if you do, I don't know, like, drama, art, and philosophy, I'm not saying anything about those subjects as a whole, but if you do that and you want to apply for maths, <laughs> you're not going to get in. Like, you need to meet the subject requirements. So, again, if you check the website and it says, we recommend that you do philosophy, then do it. Um, if it says philosophy doesn't count, then you might have to make up for that somehow. But I don't see why it wouldn't count for any no. arts or humanities subject. Well, I think it, or um, science. certainly for these sciences, I can't speak for the humanities because I'm a scientist, but they really do care, like we said before, about your ability. Yeah. Um, so if you do, if you say you're applying for physics, like, like, like I do, and you do maths and physics, and further maths at A level, then if you wanted to do another, a fourth subject, you could do whatever you want because they're going to ask you an interview about your ability to do physics and they're not going to care if you do drama or PE or whatever on the side because that doesn't, inf you know, what's the, the quote, what's the quote, um, the existence of broccoli doesn't affect the taste of chocolate. Like, your ability to do something else does not affect your ability to do, like, yeah. the subject you're applying for. Okay, yeah. So that's a very, very <laughs> quote. I think it's a John Green one. Okay. okay, so last question. If I achieve poor grades at GCSE, three A's, the rest B's, but form well at A level, A star A A or A star A star A, do I have a chance at Oxbridge with a good personal statement slash reference slash interview? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so like we said before, GCSEs are just a part of a part of the information that they use to kind of assess you. Um, your A levels are going to be the most important. If you've got good ASs, good predicted grades, and you achieve those A level grades, uh, which you seem to have done, yep. um, then that's the most important part, and the interview as well. Um, so if, yeah, don't let the fact that you've got, I don't know, maybe what you would consider mediocre GCSEs um, put you off from applying because they may, they may look at your GCSEs and think, oh, not so good, but then they'll see your A-levels and you might have an amazing interview and they think, yes, you're perfect and take you. So don't let that put you off. But you you've still got a chance. Definitely don't, definitely don't not apply just because you're not the perfect student. Yeah. Because there are so many people here that either that did that at GCSE, or some people that did the, the opposite actually and did yeah. really bad, so really great GCSEs and then sort of fell off the rails a little bit. At, at yeah, I mean we can't tell you like anyone who writes in with their grades or their predicted grades. We can't say yes, you're going to definitely get an offer because it depends on the entire picture. It depends on your interview and your personal statement and everything else. So the only thing we can say is just apply, like give it a yeah. go. Unless unless you know that you're not gonna achieve the grades that are required for A-level, um, then there's no reason why you shouldn't apply. Yeah, I mean, if you don't apply, you have a 0% chance of getting in. Yeah. So you've got nothing to lose. Yeah. Thank you for joining me, Maddie. That's all right, thank you for having me. If you guys have any more questions, um, just write in to Simon, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer them. Or alternatively, uh, St. Peter's College is on Facebook and Twitter. So um, write to us. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right. <laughs>